Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my awesome co-host, Donovan. And today, we are talking about setting boundaries, a very important thing to do. So Donovan, what are your initial thoughts when it comes to setting boundaries? So the first thing I think of is that this is a skill that's pretty useful in a lot of domains, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of different places that setting boundaries can really help improve your quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that comes to mind along with that is that different realms have different difficulties for different people. So like some people have no problem setting boundaries at work, but struggle at home or the other way around. Right. Or setting boundaries with friends might be something that's that's harder than than other places. Mm -hmm. um, and in most cases, if if you're feeling like you're not able to set boundaries correctly, it, it usually means like you're feeling like stepped on or overlooked or some sort of negative something or other. So it's definitely a skill worth investing into. Um, but yeah, those are just some of the high level thoughts. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Yeah, I I agree that there's there's different areas of life where you can set boundaries whether it's your relationships or work or friendships things like that um and i think it it's like an ongoing journey to learn them in all aspects of your life like i think i've developed boundaries as i've just gotten older and experienced and realized that this doesn't really work for my health or well-being when I don't set boundaries, for example, like in work, of just constantly saying yes to everything because you don't want to disappoint people. And, and then just feeling so burnt out that you don't really, it impacts your health or it just makes you resentful or it does a lot of negative effects on you. Um, but that can be the same thing for relationships. You could have a hard time saying no to things or you have a hard time, you know, or if there's something that's happening to you that you don't like and you don't set the boundary or communicate that this is something that I'm not okay with, then you're just setting yourself up to be walked on <laughs> essentially, which is not fun. Yeah. I think as we start exploring sort of the like, what can you do to actually mm -hmm. start uh, developing a skill set around setting boundaries? I think what you just mentioned is one of the important things, which is, you know, if if you are experiencing something that you don't like and you don't communicate about it, sometimes it's not even people trying to push you too hard or trying to mm -hmm. do, you know, trying to like maliciously do something. It's more right. that um, you have just like taken on something or allowed something or whatever else that mm -hmm. is not working out for you. I think the clearest example for me is, in my work life in the past, there have been times where I've been working, you know, extra long hours or mm -hmm. um, on the path to burnout or whatever else. And I just felt like there were these expectations around what I should be doing. And mm -hmm. then once I communicated that to my boss, uh, um, I've had instances on both sides, right? I've had instances mm -hmm. where there's been pushback and it's like, no, you need to do this. But there's also been instances where it's like, I don't know why you're working these crazy hours. Like nobody asked you to do that. You shouldn't be doing that. You don't need to do that. Right. And so I think that's one of the first pieces, um, you know, for setting boundaries is like, you can't expect any boundaries to exist if you're not, if you, if you don't open a dialogue and you may mm -hmm. find that, um, you know, if you're lucky that it's super easy and there's just like some misalignment of expectations. Uh, mm -hmm. And then in the harder circumstances, you may find there's more, negotiation or or role drawing or like uh, I hesitate to say ultimatums because I can't think of a better word but you know some more tension around the actual solution but the first thing you have to do is let people know you're not enjoying what you're experiencing because I've seen it and I've done it firsthand of yeah. just like this like oh I'm I'm getting overworked here or this person stepping all over me or whatever else and they've never even opened up that initial mm -hmm. conversation around like I don't like this yeah yeah, definitely. Actually, I just remembered the episode that kind of mirrors <laughs> maybe this or parallels it is the the people pe pleasing episode that we had done a little while back because it, it does kind of go hand in hand. But I'm I'm curious, do you feel like there's 
I mean, people pleasing tend to people, people that people please have a hard time setting boundaries, I think is the general gist, but like, you might not be a people pleaser, but you may struggle to set boundaries could be another situation. And I'm curious, like what your thoughts are, um, like on the, on the difference or how it could be distinct from people pleasing. Yes. So to me, the difference is around sort of, uh, well, there, first of all, there is some overlap, right? There is, like you were saying, like if people who tend to people please tend to also not set boundaries. Right. Um, but the difference for me is in the, in you don't like, let's say that you don't do people pleasing stuff, right? Someone can actually come with a, a set of expectations or Mm -hmm. requests or whatever else. And you may have to negotiate where your boundaries are for what you're willing to do. Whereas to me in the people pleasing Mm -hmm. side of things, people are sort of proactively doing things that they think will probably be nicer for the other person, whether or not that actually maps onto an expectation that has explicitly been set. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition, when those expectations do get set, people who do a lot of people pleasing tend to just, you know, roll over on it and and do it. But I think that's where some of the, the more fine grained, distinctions come mm-hmm. is um setting boundaries is often uh there's there's more actual substantiated external expectations uh, that's my thoughts right i actually think with setting boundaries that it doesn't necessarily have to have like an external expectation it's almost like like you had mentioned before that there can be like an internal expectation like from yourself mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. your boss didn't tell you to work all these extra hours But sometimes like, and I think I'm totally guilty of this, especially in med school of just like pushing myself way too hard, like studying late into the night. Nobody told me to do that. Just study till like (laughs) 4am. I just didn't have a boundary with myself. And I think that's another nuance or difference is that sometimes we, we lack those boundaries for ourselves and our well being, Um, and we push our ourselves and our bodies or our mental health beyond what is, is healthy because we're trying to like achieve something, uh, which might not be actually a realistic way to achieve it essentially. Yeah. And I think that's a good point because those are two, at least in my mind, two Mm -hmm. very separate and distinct types of problems, which is Mm -hmm. to say, like, if you are having trouble setting boundaries in, in your own life for yourself, um, the things you need to do, like you have control over what's going on. There's not really I mean, maybe there's an internal negotiation, but there's no external person you have to negotiate with. So some of the skills that you need for setting boundaries with other people don't necessarily apply and vice versa. There's other like control, Mm -hmm. self-control or I don't got me messed up from the control. I was talking about control the other (laughs) week. I was trying to not use control, but anyway, (laughs) um, you know, some different, different tools and strategies where externally like it comes more into, I think, like communication and different strategies for developing um, just uh, a middle point that you can mm-hmm. both agree on. Mm, yeah, definitely. Another another thing I just thought of because I was interacting with someone recently um, that was struggling in their relationship and um, their partner, you know, was clear with with her boundaries And then I was asking him like, well, what are your boundaries? And he didn't really know if he had any, (laughs) or he was just like, oh, well, I guess I'm, I'm wrong. Or I'm, I did this bad thing because I crossed it and I didn't realize it, but I was like, well, what about for yourself? Like, I think there's people that don't even realize what their boundaries are, are, or don't even know how to, what it should be or (laughs) what that should look like or how to set it. So I guess it's like, if you were completely like in the dark, this is like a totally foreign concept to you. It's like, how, how do you even begin that process? Cause I wasn't even sure what to say (laughs) Say to that. I'm like, talk to a therapist. Yeah. (laughs) That's that's my starting point. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So off the top of my head, I'll just spitball and see where we end up. Yeah. But the first thing that comes to mind for me is like, okay. So if you feel like your boundaries are being pushed in some way, right? Mm -hmm. To me, that signifies some sort of negative experience. Right. So I think the first step is maybe figuring out or stepping back and seeing like, 
is this unpleasant because it's inherently unpleasant? So for example, like I have this job, I have to clean the bathroom as part of my job. I hate it. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like my boundaries are getting pushed. Well, like Mm -hmm. maybe they are, maybe they're not. It's more of like, what are you willing to do? Or like, are you willing to do what this job entails? Right. (laughs) Right. That's potentially part of it. Right. Another part of it is sort of once you have a grasp on whether it's something like that, or if it's something like, Hey, Mm -hmm. every time I go to work, my manager puts me down, like just says negative Mm -hmm. things to me. Like that's not an inherently negative thing that, or unpleasant thing. That's part of your job. So like getting a little bit more clear about, um, I guess where you can set up boundaries, right? Because Mm -hmm. for the first example, you might not be able to say, I don't want to clean the bathroom anymore and still have this job, right? Like that might be, now you might say like, I'm not willing to do that. And then you are willing to forfeit the job. Like that's, a totally reasonable path and set of boundaries. But I think getting clear on sort of where the problem is and what domain it falls in can Mm -hmm. help you to start understanding where potentially you can set boundaries. And I don't know if this (laughs) answers the question that you're asking at all, but for me, I've had times where I feel like I'm like, um, my boundaries are being pushed or, or whatever else. And when I sit back and really think about it, I have to understand sort of the bigger picture and, and, and the weights of different things. Mm -hmm. So like the second example, like where it was like, someone's just being mean to me. Like that's one where it's like, I have a lot of, or it's, it it would appear that I have a lot of influence as to where like that boundary gets set, as opposed to sort of like this job wreck thing Mm -hmm. where it's like, uh, it's a little bit tighter around, like, I can, I can either be willing to do this or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess third path you could ask if it's, you could specifically not do that and do something else instead. But right. um, anyway, that that's where I would start is like, just because in your example, they're, they're uh, I, I don't know the details of mm-hmm. the problem. Right. But there could be something like, I don't want to do this chore. Like I hate it. And right. I feel like it's not fair because I always have to do it. And like, right. anyway, that's, that's where I would put a starting point, but you have looked skeptical for most of me talking. <laughs> no, so I, was, I was just thinking because are. I was thinking about like what was going on in my brain was thinking about, well, yeah, there's, go, there's always going to be things in life you don't want to do that you have to do. <laughs> That's, and you can't just be like, well, I'm setting a boundary and I'm not going to do anything that I don't want to do. <laughs> That's like a little different because it's like doing a chore, like let's say it's for your household doing a chore and you refusing to do any household chores and letting the other people in your home do everything. Well, that's a little unfair. <laughs> if you, you're just like, well, this is my boundary. I don't clean it. But I think it has to be like a conversation of like, okay, maybe you really hate doing dishes. Okay. Well then maybe you take out the trash all the time. That's your designated chore versus like all the chores fall on you because I'm setting, (laughs) I don't think it works like that, but I think you used a great example of like, if someone's being consistently mean to you, you know, I think that's a fair, fair reason to, to set the boundary. And like, in, so that could be in a work situation that could be in a family situation. Like sometimes if there's like a family reunion and you just know this person just drives you crazy. I think if you've communicated multiple times that you don't like this type of um, I don't know what they're saying about you, but it's hurtful and to set that boundary. And if they don't respect that, then you can choose to not necessarily engage with that person, <laughs> even if they're family, essentially. Yeah. I think that's a, a good sort of strategy to start with too. And the reason that I brought up the piece around kind of how, uh, just like determining the problem a little bit more clearly is because mm-hmm. I have heard around me, People say like, oh, this place is taking advantage of me or this person's taking advantage of me or, or whatever else. But as a as an external person seeing like sort of like, oh, mm. that's sort of part of what you signed up for, for this job or for whatever <laughs> right. else, right? Yeah. Like there there have been instances of that. And then of course there are other instances where it's like, this, this doesn't seem correct at all. Like you're saying, like, you know, if your family mm. member is just putting you down or treating yeah. you badly, then like that doesn't fit in the realm. Mm-hmm. So that's why I brought it up as a first step is just because I've I've experienced or seen mm-hmm. places or parts where people think feel like they're getting taken advantage of, but yeah. it may be part of what they signed up for or mm-hmm. like part of what that package entails. But then I think like you're saying, once you have identified like 
no, this is actually something where I need to set boundaries as opposed to just like make a decision around whether or not I'm I'm willing to do whatever this thing mm-hmm. is or like accept this package or this piece of things. Mm-hmm. Then I think it gets important, like you're saying, like you got to communicate. And I think it gets important to get clear on what it is that you are willing to tolerate because I feel like in my experience, mm-hmm. a lot of the times the the negative experience or behaviors is like either intermittent or it's at varying degrees of intensity or like it's usually gray area stuff. Yeah. Um, at least in my experience, like there's nothing that's usually when it's so bad that it's like, this is ridiculous. Like then mm-hmm. it's a lot easier to, for me at least, I know this isn't the case for everyone, but to actually just immediately set boundaries and be like, yeah, this is crazy. Like every time I walk into this place, everyone treats me horribly. I'm just never coming back. Yeah. Uh, but it's more of this like gray area stuff. And that like you were talking about with your friend, it can be really hard to set a boundary when you don't know what it is that you're okay with. So I think getting mm-hmm. clear on like, um, and sometimes the other person doesn't even know what they're doing. Like yeah. uh, comment, like first thing that comes to mind is comments around like people's people's weight or whatever right like I'm Mm -hmm. sure you've seen family stuff where it's like oh you're getting fat like stuff (laughs) like that where it's like (sighs) um but Mm -hmm. I think you know getting clear on like when you make comments about my weight like that doesn't feel good I don't like it and I like if you talk to me like that I'm just gonna leave or whatever sort of way you want to characterize what the boundary is right Um, I think the the more clear you can get on what's okay and what's actually making you like Mm-hmm. feel bad as opposed to like oh I'm just never gonna be around this person because that's not really a boundary but mm-hmm. letting them know like when you do x makes me feel y or y happens and yeah. so if you continue to do that z is the sort of outcome or right. action that I'm gonna take right yeah no I think that's a great formula to illustrate the point um it just made me think about like people in relationships that struggle to set boundaries and that I think part of it's not knowing what boundary to set, but then the other part I think of is maybe the fear of setting a boundary because they're, they're thinking, oh, well, maybe that person won't like me as much. Maybe they'll leave me. And I think that's where it's important to do some more introspective, reflective work for yourself of like, what are your hard boundaries and what do you really need if they're constantly putting you down or, or maybe they get super drunk all the time or something like that. It's like, that's, that's something you have to establish and again, work with a professional to discuss those matters with, but I think there's a fear, but I also realize like what I've learned in my own relationships and my experiences, because I think I have been that person who is afraid to set boundaries is that actually when I learn to set those boundaries over time and realize like what I'll put up with what I won't, you know, it's, it's gotta be more serious, obviously. Um, I think I gained actually more respect from my partner or if they didn't like it, then it's like, then that's probably not a relationship. I don't want to be in. It's probably a relationship I don't want. So, but otherwise they like respected me and that like, I think built a healthier relationship when I could set the boundary. Yeah. I mean, if, as long as you are, uh, for lack of a better word, negotiating with someone who actually cares mm-hmm. about you, right. then the outcome should be positive. Now I will say, and, and this is actually pretty important is I think like we're talking about uh, with like um, our guests uh, around preventing divorce, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the way that you actually communicate what your boundaries are Mm-hmm. makes a big difference and the more specific you can get around actions without sort of attacking the person's character or intentions necessarily mm-hmm. the more likely it is to work positively for you yeah. right so you know there's 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 two totally different ways that you could try to set boundaries and one is like hey Alice you're mean to me all the time you don't treat me good like I need you to stop and that is something like the way that I just framed that mm-hmm. is very there are subtle attacks on your character built into the way that I just said that, right? Like yeah. one, like you're being mean to me, which in, in some way uh, implies that like you are intending to do something malicious. Right, yeah. As as well as like, you mm-hmm. know, you need to stop. You may not even be clear what it is that is making me feel this way. 
So right. if I were to instead come with you and to come to you and say like, Hey, when you, I don't know, raise your voice or mm-hmm. change, like have us have a, a certain tone or like when you speak about certain subjects in a certain way, or when you don't acknowledge what I'm saying or like anything that's more specific. Yeah has a much better chance of working. And especially if it's more specific in a way that doesn't have any attack on their character, right? Their character mm-hmm. is not built in, right? It's just purely yeah. the action stuff. Right. Especially if this is someone that like actually cares about you, then yeah. those messages are much more likely to land. Now you still may get people who are uh, sensitive to some degree or another and feel mm-hmm. like they're being attacked personally. But the more that you can do to remove that sort of language, the more likely you're able to set those boundaries effectively. Because I don't know if you've ever had this where it's like, hey, you're being mean to me or, or whatever else. And the mm-hmm. other person is like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. And then it escalates in some weird direction and mm-hmm. nothing ever gets resolved because one person is feeling mistreated or their boundaries are being pushed or mm-hmm. overstepped or whatever else. And the other person is unclear on what they're doing that is causing that. Yeah. And so nothing gets resolved. Yeah, no, I think that's a really important point that you made because it is important to kind of clarify and, you know, nobody likes to be attacked in general and usually they become more defensive and reactive and um, kind of like a a thing that they talk about in therapy a lot is just like using I statements versus you like blaming the blame game doesn't really get you that far. But if you're sharing like, okay, this action has this type of impact or this is the impact it has on me or how it makes me feel like how I feel um, that might go a little bit further than just like you suck. (laughs) You're a terrible person. You make me feel bad. (laughs) And the reason I bring that up is because of what I've seen is a lot of people leave these things off for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's generally, you don't generally hear about like, Oh, my employer did something slightly outside of my boundaries today. Mm -hmm. And I pushed back on it. And now we have an agreement. Like, usually it's like this, like for six (laughs) months, I've been doing this thing. I didn't Mm want to do it. Mm -hmm. Like they keep making me do it. I'm just going to go in and give them a piece of my mind. And like, by that point, things are usually so escalated that it's hard to set a, a, a useful boundary because you're coming in and unloading a bunch of emotional baggage as opposed Mm -hmm. to actually like trying to solve the specific thing that you feel isn't going correctly. Yeah, totally. And the the other thing I want to add to that is that I think it's kind of like, just from my own experience, I feel like setting boundaries is kind of like a muscle you have to exercise (laughs) that you get better at it, the more you do it and it gets easier and less uncomfortable. And now I think at this point in my life, it's not really, there's not so much, uh, internal conflict about, should I set the boundary? It's just like, no, it's just pretty clear. Just set it, forget it kind of a thing. I feel like too, as you build that muscle, you, in relation to what I was just talking about, you get the problem resolved or you start unwinding it much Mm -hmm. earlier before you've had a chance to build up all the baggage Mm -hmm. to bring in and and throw down at the end and cause a a big scene yeah so um however uh on a related ish note i have Mm -hmm. a question for you which is let's say that somebody has tried to set a boundary right Mm -hmm. like let's Mm -hmm. uh, i'll use work as an example but it can just Mm -hmm. be whatever They've tried to set a boundary and they feel like it's not getting respected Mm. Um, after they've done this initial conversation piece, because that's mostly what we've been talking about. What do you think are some good next steps or something like to do after that? (laughs) It's funny because I actually was just reading uh, this random, like, you know, junk internet stuff, (laughs) like how people quit their jobs because of their boundaries getting pushed to a certain extent. And realizing like, you know, um, there were some, a lot of examples where, you know, someone requested a vacation time and then like their boss or manager were like, actually this person called out. So you have to come in, even though we already permitted you to have your vacation. And that kind of thing would be very upsetting for, for anyone. And if that was like to happen, honestly, I'm like, I don't know if I'd want to stick with it if it just happened once, but if it happened more than once, I definitely would be just planning my exit 
And I think it's like, I get that you, not everyone can just quit their job on a whim you have to support yourself. But if it's like a frequent boundary that is crossed to start thinking of your exit strategy and start looking at other opportunities where you can feel safer in your work environment and respected and, and honored versus just like taken advantage of, or just like another number on the chain. And that's, that's important. And you know, that takes time. And we've talked about that in other episodes of like, yeah, maybe don't just quit off the cup. If you can, then maybe you do. But uh, if you are not able to start to look at other, other opportunities so you can get out of there. Yeah, uh, that largely lines up with what I was thinking is like, mm-hmm. if you're in any kind of relationship, right, whether there's business or friends or whatever else, and you've tried yeah. to set boundaries and it's not working, mm-hmm. then realistically to me, and unless you see an effort, like, right. you know, if it's like a friend and you're trying to set a boundary and they're mm-hmm. trying to do it, but they're not doing right. a perfect job. And like, yeah, it, you know, if it's making progress then that's, that's right. a different story. But if there's mm-hmm. someone that's just completely disregarding what you've talked about and, or they're just paying lip service and they just keep saying like, Oh, right. this is going to change. And then they continue to overstep their boundaries. Mm-hmm. Right. That's when I would start looking at what your other options are, right? You know, like if you're in a relationship, like there are plenty of people out there, like a romantic relationship, like there's plenty of other potential partners. If they're not willing to respect your boundaries, like that's Mm -hmm. a big red flag. Same with friends, same with work establishments. And again, like for all these things, like you said, maybe it can't be an instant like, okay, this is done On to the next thing. But Mm -hmm. I would definitely start considering what steps you need to take because once uh, to me, at least, once someone has shown that they're they're not willing to respect your boundaries, um, it just shows like a lack of fundamental respect. Or in some mm-hmm. cases, for like work or something, like yeah, they can't accommodate what you need. Mm-hmm. Or I, I guess that might be for people too. Actually, like right. it, it's one of those two things, though, is either like a lack of care or a lack of ability to actually get right make those changes. And mm-hmm. either way, the outcome is sort of the same. Like your needs are not going to be. Mm-hmm. met uh, in in a way that's nice for you the only other thing that i would potentially think about and um is just to make sure that the position you have is reasonable right mm-hmm. just just because sometimes i've seen people get so wrapped up in the emotional parts of it and so mm-hmm. frustrated and so whatever else that instead of looking for some uh other solution there they they have sort of this boundary of like mm-hmm. for example like i'm not going to work on Sundays, no matter what. And like, maybe, maybe that is a boundary you want to hold, but maybe it's not, maybe it's something that's, that's been, um, basically maybe you're getting clouded by, by the emotional weight of other things. So uh, I'm not saying to give up your boundaries in those cases. I'm just saying to like, especially if it's a drastic thing, Mm -hmm. double check that there isn't some other third path that might Mm -hmm. also work for you um but again it's all about like this negotiation piece and making sure the other party is actually like working with you and right etc etc yeah actually that just made me think of if you were on the the flip side of the person crossing the boundary like Mm -hmm. if you were the boss and you were shorthanded like there was another like am i the asshole (laughs) reddit thread i was following of just this guy who was a manager who had a new hire And um, she already had this vacation pre-planned. So she had already requested that time off, which they honored. But like around the time, like the the schedule was posted, they were like, oh, actually it doesn't work out because two other people called out that week. Since you're the newest person, we can't give you your request. (laughs) And so he thought that was like reasonable in his head because it's like, well, there were no other, there are no other options in his mind, but in reality, so the the new hire was very upset because she paid like thousands of dollars for this trip and she's not about to back out. So she basically quit like before she even really like got that started. And you have to realize, even though you're in a tight situation, like that manager was like, well, I don't feel like there's any other choice. You have to think about like, well, this could result in losing your <laughs> employee. Um, and is that worth it? Because now you're even further backed up for several months and have to go through the new hire process even longer. So now you're even extra shorthanded when you could have just been shorthanded for just a couple of weeks while you gave that person their vacation that they had requested and was 
one of the things that they wanted from the, that they communicated from the get-go of being hired. So I think that's something I see a lot in these stories of like, oh, well, there's nothing else we can do. We just have to force these people in. And it's like, okay, I get your situation. I think there do- it doesn't hurt to ask, but to not expect them to, or you don't force them <laughs> and not expect them to like, just accommodate. You can explain your situation of like, you know, man, we're really in a bind. I hate to do this. I hate to ask, you know, it would be such a big difference. You know, I'll make it up to you later. I'll give you an extra week of vacation later. Maybe that will entice them, but to just flat out be like, nope, you can't have that. It, it really, I think, propels people to just like want to walk away if you're, if you're being that person who crosses the boundary. Yeah, that's a good, really good example. And I'm glad you sort of switched the perspective because, mm-hmm. you know, in that example, if you're the boss and mm-hmm. you have already negotiated and accepted that someone is going to have a vacation, right? right? If you step back and think about it, you know, as a third party, which mm-hmm. is very easy for us because we are third parties. <laughs> right. But yeah. you know, if you think about it as a third party, like, is it reasonable to try to have someone work when you already made this agreement? Like, mm-hmm. is it reasonable to go back on this agreement? Right. And like, not really, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> no. not really. So uh, I think it just shows that like the, the other thing you mentioned about like asking like, mm-hmm. I think that is reasonable, right? Yeah. I think it is reasonable to say, like, are you able to do this? Right. But then if they're, if they can't, then like, as, as the manager or whatever else, it's your responsibility to figure out how to fix the situation right? without reneging on things that you already agreed to because mm-hmm. of what you just said, there's all these follow on negative consequences, but also just, you know, on principle, like if you're just looking at it as a third party, it's like, yeah, you can't force this person in. And that's another thing that's, I think is important around like boundary setting and whatnot is, is if you are ever feeling like, or it seems like you're forcing someone to do something, even if that works in the short term, Mm -hmm. there will be damage to the relationship. It is always far better if you can get the other person on board and engaged, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Same with like romantic relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure you've seen or experienced times where it's like, Hey, you have to do this. And it's like, <laughs> doesn't sit well. I'm not going to do it. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> right. I was already going to do it, but now I'm not. No, you know, right. kind of... now I really so, don't want to do it. <laughs> anytime that you uh, are on the other side and you feel like you're brushing up against someone's boundaries, um, that's a really good time to look for third options or yeah. like to start opening up conversation or negotiation. Like you said, like you said, like it could have been feasible that the person just wanted a week off to stay at home or something and and making a negotiation around like Mm -hmm. you can have an extra two days off or whatever Mm -hmm. if you work this and then later when we have enough staff like looking for those third path options are are much better ways to both improve the situation because sometimes Mm -hmm. like you said when you're in that binary like you come in and they're like no i'm just gonna quit uh and to improve sort of the standing of the relationship too Mm -hmm. yeah definitely you have to understand that there's there's impacts when you, when you push those boundaries um, and to recognize. And yeah, maybe even like, you know, don't cross the boundary, but I think it's open. It's OK to like, you know, maybe brainstorm with that person. Be like, you know, this is the bind I'm in, like more brains, more ideas. Like there's there's potentially a lot of solutions to this. Um, and maybe you only see one path, but there could be several paths. <laughs> to get to the answer and on on a sort of similar note right like it's much better if you can kind of work together to solve the problem yeah so even if they're trying to set a boundary that you feel like is -hmm. ridiculous or or unfair or whatever else Mm -hmm. to them they're not trying to set that flippantly for the most part right like most people um tend to either struggle to set boundaries a bit or they're they just feel very confident in what they want mm-hmm. and need. Mm-hmm. Either way, like getting them on board to help you solve the problem will be far more effective than either trying to use force or yeah. like, uh, you know, if somebody's like, oh, I don't want to work these specific days. Like if you ridicule them or if you <laughs> sort of dismiss the boundary right. they're trying to set as not mm-hmm. important, um, even if you don't understand at that moment, it is important to them. So you have yeah. to, even if you want, 
to bypass that or negotiate out of it or whatever mm-hmm. else. You have to at least start by acknowledging it and then right. sort of opening the conversation from there. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Totally important. All right. Well, I think we covered this topic pretty well. Was there any final points you want to make before we wrap up? Uh, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. Just, you know, setting boundaries is not easy for a lot of yeah. people. It, yeah. and there have been times in my life and probably are still places in my life that it's a struggle. So uh, anytime that you can exercise that or start working on it, mm-hmm. it, it will pay some pretty big dividends um, because it's not worth just like, like I was saying, like building up that baggage and building it up and building it up because then by the time you unload all of it, it is much harder to think clearly, find a solution that actually works and maintain the relationships. So the earlier you can get on it, the better. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in this week. We appreciate you. And if you appreciate us, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and help spread the happiness in the world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot. If you're looking for more content, there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.